This is the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're back with Agatha all along. Episode 2, Circle Sewn with Face. Unlock thy hidden gate. Road is no place for a kid. I'm 16. Oh, sorry. Teen. I don't know where you heard about the road. Books, the ballad, legend, lore. But it will kill you. Didn't kill you. Well, I'm exceptional. That's my point. Okay, so confession, I know an egregious amount about you. I've been obsessed since I first showed up in your Salem days. Hmm. One of my favorite you eras. It's a good one. It's why I came here last night. It's why I saved you from the spell you were under. No, <laughs> it was it was my pleasure. Hmm. Well. If you've got the goods to break a spell cast by the Scarlet Witch. <gasps> Why do you need the road? Welcome back, witches and fellow defenders to the Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're back for our second episode of Agatha All Along with Circles Sewn with Face. Unlock thy hidden gaze. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow defenders. And yes, welcome back again, witches. <laughs> uh, I am one of your other hosts, John. Good to have you back. Absolutely. In between when we recorded the first episode and the second episode, John, uh, Marvel Entertainment just posted a photo of a moon, and if you increase the brightness of it, it confirmed the title for episode one and episode two, and we were right, and we got Yay. the titles right. <laughs> so we don't have to change anything, thankfully. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Yeah, they have been so good about promoting this show. The posters that they put out for Yeah, for, really uh, good. Yeah, with all the cast in different uh, situations, different uh, TV shows, it was really cool. Uh, and this was a, a lovely reveal, the, the moon revealing the name of the first two episodes loved it loved it yeah definitely yeah. um let's get on with our spoiler filled discussion mm -hmm. uh, of episode two circle sewn with fate unlock thy hidden gate uh before we do though after that little bit of poetry mm -hmm. just remember fellow defenders uh, to pop on over to our website where you can subscribe to the podcast over at tvpodcastindustries.com you can either leave a voicemail or subscribe on mm -hmm. any Wiccan or Android loving podcast player of your choice. We also love to get feedback on the shows uh, we cover from our listeners. So please, if you have any thoughts, theories, observations, or anything else, please send your emails to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com mm -hmm. or head on over to our Facebook group over at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TV podcast industries, where we will leave spoiler posts for every episode of Agatha all along over there. And you can provide your feedback there as well. Absolutely. How are you enjoying the show? I hope you're liking it as much as we are. I have got a song stuck in my head since we watched this episode over and over. Or should I say, <laughs> down, down, down yes. again. Down so does Mrs. Hart. <laughs> yes, she does. We will talk all about it in this episode. Hope you've watched the second episode of Agatha all along as well. Um, been really good fun. Uh, just a reminder, we are, of course, doing our coven cauldron quiz uh, for agatha all along uh, where you get a chance to get some agatha harkness goodies uh, there will be a second question later on in the episode and gather all the correct answers together at the end of the season and email them into us to that email address and you could get your hands on some agatha harkness goodies yes indeed uh, good luck fellow quizzes Absolutely. and fellow defenders uh, if you're taking part in our cauldron quiz mm -hmm. um, but let us get on with episode two. Derek, what are some of the episode details? Well, showrunner of the show, of course, is Jack Schaefer, who is also the showrunner on WandaVision. This episode was written by Laura Dunney, who wrote the penultimate episode of WandaVision as well. So another writer sticking on board for the stuff. second season of WandaVision, as we're definitely going to be calling it. <laughs> this episode, again, was directed by showrunner Jack Schaefer. Uh, John, do you want to give us the synopsis for the second episode of Agatha All Along? Sure. Agatha interrogates the teenager that she trapped in her house. 
He wants her guidance to travel the Witch's Road, a mythical place where a witch can gain great power if they reach the end. But every time Agatha tries to get information from the teenager, the world goes silent around her. She tentatively agrees to travel the road with the teen, but needs a coven to begin the trip. Watched all the way by various creatures, they travel together, encouraging Lilia, a psychic, Jennifer, a potions master, and Alice, a blood witch, to join them. To complete the circle, they need a green witch, so Agatha enlists the help of her green-fingered neighbour, Mrs. Hart. Together, the new coven sings an ancient spell to open the gateway to the Witch's Rose. With the Salem Seven bearing down on her home, Agatha and her new coven climb the steep entry steps to head down, down, down the road. As I said, yep, that song has just been stuck in my head. You know, with that coupled (laughs) with our coverage of Rings of Power, where we just had Tom Bombadil's song uh, stuck in our head for about two weeks uh, as well. Yeah, I think I'm I'm pushing all popular music out of my head into uh, (laughs) (laughs) just filling it up with these brand new songs that are coming in from all of the shows we're covering, John. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, no, absolutely. I loved um, the whole uh, recanting of the the song the ballads, um, yeah. and the ballads yeah to get uh, or to to at least to attempt to open the entrance to uh, the witch's road but i mean i just loved like the like deciding who was going to be doing the high notes who were doing the low notes mm-hmm. who was flat who was pitchy i just thought that was really really good really yeah. good well if we have this cast with someone like Catherine han who's got a great voice and obviously yeah. had uh, basically had a number one single with agatha all along and you surrender with someone like patty lapone who's a well-known Absolutely. Uh, stage singer you know you gotta have songs in there i was expecting more i'm hoping we're gonna get even more songs uh, as the series goes on uh, but i love the idea that this is a spell cast in song through the ballad uh, at the end of the episode yeah, really cool absolutely but we're going to talk about our top spells from the episode um our top moments and we're just calling them spells because of course it's agatha all along <laughs> let's start out with our spell number one the unnamed teen i know we talked about the teen last episode it's just because Joe Locke is such a central character in the show and we still don't have his name. Um, And there's little touches in here that we're trying to understand who the character is and why he's so important in this story for Agatha. You know, we we start out the episode where she sees him still trapped and directly taking off from episode one. I'm glad the two episodes released back to back uh, on Disney Plus, you know. We have him effectively taking off his own covering on his mouth to tell Agatha, why he's so important that he wants to travel the witch's road. And that's why he's been here. That's why he's been following her. That's why he's been learning all about her, because she's the one that could guide him onto the witch's road. But that's it. I mean, I think with the the unnamed teen here, it, like there's a few little breadcrumbs here which are really done. I mean, firstly, just the fact that, you know, from episode one, Agatha or Agnes, the detective, had interviewed him, had no details on him. He wasn't in the police system. She wasn't in her system. Okay, that was an illusion, effectively. But now, you know, she's calling him Random Boy. But, you know, the teen here is saying, well, power is what both of us are missing. Yes. Which is really interesting. Mm. So he's almost coming off as a witch enthusiast Mm -hmm. you know a goth boy witch enthusiast wants to be kind of at the um dare i say it the disney um theme park version of witches and wizards (laughs) and so on right um but the these breadcrumbs in that you know first of all he knows about this um, legend, this law of the witch's rose, mm-hmm. the fact that he knows that it gives you the thing you want the most, assuming that you make it to the end. And so uh, uses that to play and buy his time, his moment with Agatha, because Agatha was about to just say, well, the Salem Seven will be here by the evening, so good luck with that. I'm off. Mm. I'm on the run, effectively. But considering property prices around the world, including in the US, she was about to give him her house as well. Uh, well, that, that's true. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. But it's interesting, this little crumb of power is what both of us are missing. Uh-huh. So... Assuming he gets to the end of the road, what is the power that he's going to get? Or is it just that he wants to be a witch, a spell? Is this a red herring whereby Mm. it's a power he knows he should have if 
he does this or a power that he's thinking he's just going to become he wants to become a witch or is it like agatha and he's someone that's lost his power maybe uh, yes power exactly. that he used to have you know um we talk about the theory. Let's let's not hold it back. I'm sure this is the theory that's going to be going everywhere. It has been ever since Joe Locke was cast in the role. Um, the theory is that this is Billy, uh, one of the children of Wanda Maximoff from season one of uh, of WandaVision. Um, partly because Joe Locke is a gay actor and he was in Heartstopper and the character of Billy is a gay, gay character in the comics and always has been so partly this is the reason why people think that this could possibly be billy yeah absolutely a also known as wiccan in terms of his powered up form Mm -hmm, in the comics yep yep so we have seen billy being a super powered character in the first season of the show could this be an older version of him in the comics billy did disappear and came back uh arriving back with powers as as wiccan so potentially this is the way they're going to go for the second season and briefly as well we do see that he has a boyfriend who mm-hmm. tries to call him he just kind of cancels the call yeah. uh, but you know is that ultimately the Hulkling um, that might be coming into play here which is Wiccan's boyfriend in, in the comics it could be yeah yeah um, Teddy is his, you know? is his other name yeah so yeah. interesting speculation and yeah. theories here uh, but certainly one I'm looking to see how it plays out Absolutely. Uh, to be honest Absolutely. so I'll be on the edge of my seat yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to to finding out this. You know, it's it's funny again. Another show that we're covering is Lord of the Rings: The Rings of Power, and there are two major characters in that show where they keep hiding the name of the character throughout. It's the Stranger and the Dark Wizard, uh, who've gone episode after episode of not having their name revealed. And here we are in another show, this time in the Marvel universe, where they're hiding the name of the character. But this one's really specific. As Agatha talks to the teen there's like an obscuring spell that goes over his mouth where it's like it's being tied up with with rope as he's as he's trying to say his name to her and he smiles away after saying his name and agatha's looking at him going i didn't hear that what was that again (laughs) yeah no i i love this um when she asks uh who the teen is and she doesn't get his name at all as you say because of this kind of it's almost like a a stitching goes Mm -hmm. across uh the mouth um so that his actual name cannot be said to her. It's hidden as it's almost like there's a shroud around her with respect to really intimate personal details of this teen. And it happens again in the car, not in terms of um, his name, but she says, where are you from? Yeah. And starts off. And I, I love how it then it all becomes muffled and inaudible for her, but she turns up the the radio and that comes through clear as day. Yeah. You know, showing her hearing hasn't gone, mm-hmm. but in everything related to sort of those close details and, and personal information of the teen Agatha is being withheld that information. Yes. And um, there is a shroud over him in that sense or over her from hearing it or a, you know a, a spell shroud of some yeah. description so really really cool yeah. I, I loved how this played out and I, it's really nice bit of intrigue which connects him with that kind of theory ultimately exactly the- um, of him being Billy slash Wickham yeah yeah, and the only other piece of information we get from him in that conversation is that he says he's from Eastview. So in in one division season one, there was Westview, which was the town uh, controlled effectively and created by uh, yeah. Wanda, and then Eastview was the other town a little bit over. I think we saw uh, Jimmy Woo and um, Darcy over at Eastview before they entered Westview. Effectively, so he says he's from Westview. He was born and brought up over there. Is that a lie? Is that part of the spell that's covering up who he really is i have a theory right now that maybe wanda maximoff had had found a way to bring back her children just as she died and that part of that spell was to obscure them from the outside world yes these two characters are attracted to each other billy and agatha harkness that the two of them have found a way back towards each other because of their connection uh in that in the town um well, so as, i wonder as we if it's said like that. from episode one the teen knows more about agatha mm-hmm. than she knows about him exactly he has sought her out not the other way around yeah. so at the moment that kind of relationship is skewed in that the teen knows the rationale mm-hmm. for going to agnes okay it's being called out as as him wanting to travel the witch's road with Agnes. Yeah. 
Um, but is that the only reason, given that there is power at the end of that road and Agatha has no other information about this companion? Exactly, exactly. So a really interesting idea. One last thing I want to say, uh, as you mentioned, John, um, if this is Billy, the boyfriend could be Teddy, a.k.a. Hulkling. I've already seen loads of people confuse the character of Hulkling with the character we saw at the end of She-Hulk. Um, that character was called Scar, the the son of Hulk. Yeah. Um, he looks very different <laughs> to Hulkling in the comic books. I understand the confusion if you haven't read the comic books or if you, if you don't know the characters, but there have loads have been loads of people, so you'll probably see lots of posts going up uh, over the next couple of days uh, from people going, that's the character, or showing pictures of the character from She-Hulk, not the same character, very yeah. different character. <laughs> so, uh, so this is Teddy, uh, potentially, who makes that phone call. But we'll see, again, as the series goes on, we'll see, hopefully, the reveal of who the unnamed teen is, because it would be really surprising if we don't get a character name. IMDb doesn't have a character name at the moment, so um, so he's still, he's still just showing as a major character, and, of course, the show itself doesn't have him as a named character in the credits even at the moment so i'm sure that'll come out over the next couple of weeks yeah exactly but that's probably enough on the unnamed teen for our spell number one let's move on to our other characters in the show we're going to give them all their own spells they're all their own points because absolutely we're off on the journey now we need to find the coven which is the key to getting on the witch's road this is what they learned together agatha and, and the teen um so we're going to go through our major other characters that are appearing in the show let's start yes. our spell number two with uh Lilia Calderu. Yes, the divination witch. Firstly, Patty Lapon, uh, absolutely love. Mm -hmm. um, you will know her from our coverage of Penny Dreadful. <laughs> you um, might, yeah, hopefully you might her, her if Penny you've Dreadful listened to those. Coverage. But yes, she was in Penny Dreadful <laughs> was, uh, that fantastic. we covered. Yeah. Um, I think huge Broadway kind of presence, uh -huh. which I think for anyone not in the US, you wouldn't necessarily understand it, it would be like a a, a theater actor gaining prominence not uh sort of on tv yeah. nationally um so yes Absolutely. very well known and um, but, but certainly she's, she's massive presence on broadway yeah. and she, in film and tv as well yeah she's like the jane judy dench of she is really yeah of the u.s she's fantastic everything that we've seen her in uh, as john said we covered every episode of, of penny dreadful and the sequel show she was in both of those she was fantastic in those uh, but she's been in so many projects a woman with such a presence and a great voice, of course, as well. Yeah. Uh, well known for her performances on Broadway. So delighted to have her on here. But playing this really interesting character of the psychic uh, who's pretending not to be psychic, but to be psychic. <laughs> so, absolutely. Uh, so a witch who can absolutely read your future. But if she does that, she'll be driven out of town by it because she's telling the actual truth of what she's seeing through her visions. Uh, so she pretends to be a psychic. I love how um, Agatha and the teen come in, to, come in to talk to her and try and get her to use her powers. And start, she, Agatha's really just trying to test her to see if she does have any powers at all. And then we have... Uh, Lilia sitting in front of her going, oh, um, <laughs> and Agatha. I, there's so uh, much I loved about Agatha's this. Agatha's reaction just going, oh, who is this person? Yeah, there's so much I loved about this. Uh, whether it was Agatha and the cover story of Beaufort and the BS, ultimately, of yeah. her husband and the, the bars of gold uh -huh. somewhere on, on a property, the husband dying on the 18th hole, uh -huh. all the kind of usual stuff and so on. Yeah. I love that. It's in his bowling bag in the back of the wardrobe. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> sure. I, yeah. but, but equally with uh, Lilia's kind of pretend sort of Oh, trying to like connect in to do the psychic reading um really good um and all just fantastic i like how it kind of moves from actually quite light-hearted comedic mm -hmm. to then um lilia turning around saying i have another reading and just gives it straight yep. you know despite Beaufort and Agatha's BS, um, I love that she comes back and says, well, I read your reputation. Mm -hmm. She knows who she is. Yep. She knows what she does, you know. Um, and I love the fact that she said, why would I want to be in uh, Agatha Harkness's coven? Uh -huh. You know, if uh, we're successful, you will just turn around and steal my power like you did with all the others years ago mm -hmm. and just confirming Agatha's kind of reputation 
uh, comes before her. And it is that she will bleed you dry yep. of your magical power to become ever more powerful. Um, and, you know, she makes it quite clear she's not interested in one way. But I do like what Agatha is trying to say, don't you seek the glory of the old days? And she goes, that's where I went from town to town and was generally yeah. driven out. You know, her view is that at the moment, getting two or three people popping in for 20 bucks mm-hmm. a time, that's fine. She's not being harassed. She's not being driven out of town every mm-hmm. five minutes. But ultimately here, um, Agatha is going to be collecting witches that actually need to be involved for some other reason. So in this case, we have that Lilia has an eviction notice on this property. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so, um, yes, she's not interested. No, she doesn't want to do it, but she is a desperate witch that, in a sense, this may be the last opportunity for her uh, to rectify her current situation, which is, an, in this case, an eviction notice. So well, yeah. I, I kind of like how this all shifted. Uh, it was great. It, I love these these scenes. Yeah, it was really, really good. And I suppose the, the, the big thing that Lily is saying to Agatha is it was people like you that convinced the world that witches ate babies, that they went through and killed other people. and Poisoned ag- apples. Poisoned yeah. apples, exactly. And Agatha's response to it was, babies do taste quite good, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I really like. But Agatha has a big reveal with her, telling her that her actual power is not that she goes around stealing other witches' power. It's that if another witch attacks her, then she's able to steal their power. So if... Lily is able to keep her powers in check and not attack Ag- Agatha for their journey together. She's going to be able to keep the power that they get at the end of the Witch's Road. So that's the the trade off that they make. Not only will she be able to be granted great power at the end of it, Agatha won't be able to take that power away unless Lily attacks her. So, uh, so that's quite an interesting little little touch there. So, will Lily be able to resist attacking her towards the end of the season? But there's another little. Interesting touch about Lilia as well. So we mentioned that she's a real psychic. She has the ability to see the future, but we see it in these really unusual ways where she almost gets possessed for a second. Um, A couple of times. I love that Agatha says, you're a bit kooky. I know every witch has their process. Um, It's really good. Yeah, but it kind of just takes you out of it and it's really good. It's like she's getting possessed or she's being interrupted by the souls that she can commune with in order to get that psychic reading. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, th- that was really nicely done. And we see her kind of, yeah, almost sort of getting possessed and writing down the names of three uh, pentacles and you have the team coming out. Well, we got a witch. She was actually a witch. And we got a roll list of the other witches that we need to get. Mm-hmm. Because she writes down the, the names um, that, Agnes will be going for effectively, yeah, including her own name. Yeah, so um, some, and she's surprised by that as well. So again, it's it's to do with her being possessed to write the list. So so Lilia writes her own name at the top of the list, and then writes the name of the other. So the other who witches has to. gone through her to yeah. get those names uh, down on paper? Because as we'll see later, it plays out a little differently for one of the witches, which is the green witch that she needs to bring along. And it apparently is critical for uh, witches traveling the witch's road. Uh, So really interesting. But I I loved these scenes. I thought, um, you know, Patrick LePon and Catherine Han here are just so, so good. They're great together. They're great together. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That's the first of our three witches for the episode. Let's go on to our spell number three with the second of the witches, Jennifer Kale, the potions master. Um, Yeah, we we really like this uh, as well because we've got a witch living and working in society using her uh, abilities to sell, what, what do they say, ice to the Eskimos? Is that kind of it or sand to the... Uh, sand to the, yeah, exactly. Ice to the Eskimos, sand to the Arabs, yeah. yeah. And I, I like Agnes saying the sisterhood of the traveling Kegel. Yes, um, that's good. Really, yeah. really good. But here, Jennifer has been magically bound, so she's not able to use her magic. Mm-hmm. But again, Jennifer recognizes Agatha, also realizes that Agatha has lost the dark hold and is now vulnerable and exposed. Yes. Um, but 
she's in a position where she's kind of putting that brave face on. She's like saying, well, I'm happy to see, you know, the back of the warty, toothless community that are witches. <laughs> yeah. um, but again, here it's the teen says that might be so, but, you know, she has legal battles that she has to um, fight because of her wonderful range of products. Yeah, the teen becomes uh, pretty important here. Uh, Agatha was about to walk away uh, without having Jennifer Kale sign on the dotted line, really, to join this coven. Um, he's the one that knows her from Instagram. Um, he's He's been following her. He knows what's happening. He also knows about the legal battles. He knows that uh, there were some um, superficial burns caused by one of her failed business ventures. And he's kind of going, yeah, you know, if there were just some superficial burns on one person, that's bad enough, maybe five years in prison, but there's 800 people claiming that she caused these superficial burns. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's also the fact that she's with some customers at the start as well. So yeah. you see the types of products that she's got, and it's this idea that there are probiotic candles <laughs> that you eat when you blow them out. I guess they're they're made from yogurt um, nah. and, and lit, and then you can taste them at the same time. I then. would say that is pure snake oil stuff i i really i really like the way she, the way she said you can eat them no you have to eat them that's fda <laughs> regulations require that you light the candle first and then you can eat uh the the probiotic candle you can't you can't uh can't eat it without lighting it that's the uh, that's the requirement um but yes jennifer is aware of who agatha harkness is um she knows exactly who she is she spent time with her in the past she knows she knows her, not just by reputation she has been around her because she says i haven't seen you since the time i decided that i didn't want to see you anymore <laughs> i wanted to spend <laughs> as much as much time away from you as possible so uh, so she is aware of her um but again the teen's twist is the reason why he gets her on board and gives her the details of where she needs to go to I like Jennifer Kale, though. I like the power that's behind her, and I like that she's someone that Agatha is already acquainted with, and she doesn't want to deal with Agatha, again, not because of the reputation, but because of the dealings that she's had with her before. She knows Agatha is very likely to turn on her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They they know her reputation for sure and are wary of her, but are all equally kind of desperate, as we were saying, in their own different ways mm. in order to get some kind of resolution. I mean, in the sense with with, with uh, Jennifer Kale, it's she's magically bound, but it has felt ostracized and, yeah. um, you know, distant from the witch community. Yeah. Um, but now, not only are you magically bound, you're also going to be legally bound as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, we have another yeah. member added to the coven uh -huh. with Jennifer Kale. And yeah. um, I think we should go on to our spell number four yes. and to our third member of the coven yes. as we get to Alice Wu Gulliver, mm -hmm. who is a blood witch or protection witch. Um, so interestingly here, she is a child born of a witch. Yes, that makes her the blood witch. That's right. Yes. Um, but she has the powers of a, of a protection witch as yeah. well. So I like that. But, uh, but I also like that Alice says later on in the episode, um, no, the answer to pretty much all of your questions is going to be, I was a former cop. <laughs> well, that was really good. Uh, you want to know anything about me? The reason why I know this, the reason why I know how to find your house is because I was a former cop. That's going to answer most of your questions Absolutely. now. Absolutely. But she's the daughter of a rock singer called Lorna Wu, um, who was the actual person that was listed on, uh, on Lilia's list that was provided uh, but Lorna Wu apparently was lost to the witch's road herself in the past um, so the way they get Alice involved in this effectively is that she has been this legacy witch she's been aware of her mother who sang the most famous version of the ballad the song that we hear at the end she's the one that sang it released it into the world um, but apparently died in the witch's road herself so they appeal to the curiosity of Alice Wu Gulliver um, because she's lived in the shadow of this song for her whole life, and I guess she wants to know whether Lorna, her, mo her mother, was on the right track, whether this ballad that she sang was true, That's was it. real. Like, yeah. She's, you know, she's she's up front and says, I'm not convinced the road is real. You know, yeah. in her mind, it's a con, it's a cult. Uh, and um, the teen and Agatha coming uh, that are part of that she calls them groupies because yeah. she thinks they're just fans of her mom's music exactly yeah. but i like the fact that the desperation here with alice is almost she's a bit you know 
it's kind of rhino skin to some extent, but it's, uh, you know, she's kind of, again, flat out refuses, but you have Agatha just kind of lean into her to say, well, it'll help you find out what happened to mummy. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. that's enough, even though the team doesn't give her the address that yeah. she needs to get to. Um, she turns up um, having found the property because she is a former car. Former car. Um, so I re- it's really good. I like that. Um, I wonder sure. if uh, I wonder if Agatha will reveal to her uh, her, her true crime aspirations <laughs> when we saw <laughs> <in> episode one. <laughs> Did I get it right in my vision, <laughs> Alice? You know that would be interesting. One of the other things I really liked about these scenes uh, with Alice, where the recruiter is that she works for Hot Topic, um, which <laughs> which is well known as the place where. All of the uh, goths and all of the teens <laughs> go in the mall um, to buy their clothes. Uh, now, when we were kids, John, you remember when yeah. uh, when we had loads of goths around us, they would go and get stuff from high street shops and turn it into their goth look. Well, Hot Topic in the US is a, is a place where you can now buy it on the high street. Yeah. Uh, so uh, very different, but I like that, that they had well, I like, Alice working yeah. in there. And I like that the teen says, I know I have a brand. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> As they're going through have the aisles. a certain style, yeah. but what the hell are we doing in Hot Topic? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so again, we have our third witch join the coven. Yeah, and according to Agatha, we only need three, even though there was four in the list. <laughs> We're going to go on to our spell number five because there's some great moments uh, in the final uh, section of the episode. The song, Down, Down, Down the Road, Down the Witch's Road, is our final spell. Um, As they all group together, Agatha's kind of going, well, that's it. That's all we need. Uh, We just need the three of you. Air, fire, and water are represented by the three witches that we've got here, uh, but they're missing one of the biggest parts, uh, Earth, the green witch. Yes. Well, the critical part, according to Jennifer, uh, the need for Earth magic uh, and the green which which was the last name um, that was written down by Lilia. But Agatha eats the list so that the <laughs> team doesn't know who it is that they should be looking That's for. That's right, yeah. Um, so she's trying to hide the the identity, I guess, to yeah. some degree of the... So she's trying to hide the identity of this fourth uh, witch requires and mm-hmm. this crucial witch. Um, but apparently the name was not a name. It was a picture of a black heart. No, it was a black. It was only black because because um, <laughs> she used a black pen. Um, right. So we can all agree that there's some definite obscuring here from Agatha um, when she's definitely lying about who this fourth person is. The fact that she... <laughs> The fact that she uh, goes to find the Green Witch by going to, well, what we're calling Mrs. Hart, which isn't even her real name, um, Agatha's neighbor, played by Deborah Jo Rupp, who played a character in the first season of the show called Mrs. Hart. That's not her real name now. She's Mrs. Davies. That's her real name. But because she's a gardener who has green fingers. uh, Green thumbs. And green thumbs. Yes, she's going to be dragged in by Agatha to represent the green witch that they're looking for. So there's some, definitely some major um, questions over who this black heart could be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, poor Mrs. Hart, at least for the time being, is... Um, absolutely ignorant to what she's getting into. She thinks she's going out for a night out with um <laughs> with Agnes yes. a- and um her her girlfriends effectively. Yeah. Um, and this plays out so wonderfully comically. Um, as they begin to conjure the road through the ballad uh, in the basement, um, of uh Agatha's house. So like Mrs. Hart is is not clear why they're down in the basement uh-huh. for a party. Are we going to yep. do some washing? Exactly. Are we going to do laundry? some laundry? <laughs> and then, of course, as they're talking about the harmonies and begin to sing, Mrs. Hart doesn't know the song or the words at all. But ultimately, uh, as it builds and builds, and it gets really wonderfully um, sort of ballady, um she kind of gets into the tune, so it's kind of dancing and smiling, yeah. think, thinking that this is part of the party. I absolutely thought this was hilarious, so good. Absolutely. Loved There's, how it was portrayed. There is a moment as she goes in, as she gets into the song where it sounds like she feels this is just a version of Row, Row, Row Your Boat that exactly. she hasn't heard before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, you hear Mrs. Hart's voice going down, down, down the road. So so she's definitely getting into it, even though she doesn't know what it is. <laughs> really enjoyed and it. And I think yeah. all the while as well, as the ballad kind 
kind of builds and builds and builds uh, and becomes more layered with the 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 sound of the uh, four witches' voices. Mm. I love the fact that it, it's building the tension around conjuring the road, but also at the same time, you have the Salem Seven mm. approaching uh, Agatha's house and um, the teen trying to barricade the walls. But the, the effect of these seven uh, Salem witches really is very cool. Uh, and I like how that just kind of draws the attention uh, throughout this whole bit. It's such a great ending and kind of crescendo to this episode. Absolutely. I really, really, really love it. And once they finish, you know, the Salem seven are coming in further you've kind of got the teen saying we need to go the conjuring of the route to the road doesn't seem to be coming through and she's agatha is well this didn't take this long uh, back in the day but again a little bit of trickery here from mm-hmm. agatha which is kind of interesting in that I'm guessing she never intended for the road to be conjured. Yeah. Because she has a go at all the other witches saying like how they're cowards, frauds, disappointments, kind of second class witches mm. um, in order to provoke them into casting a spell at her in order that she can then steal the power. Mm. Um, and they they realize this. Yes. But as this is playing out, a hexagonal door appears on the floor of mm-hmm. the basement uh, in Agatha's house. And um, I like this because I think earlier on they talk about how it needs to be a real coven mm-hmm. that can, or it's only a real coven that can conjure the witch's road. Yeah. And I just wonder through the bickering and through this kind of. Um, I guess bonding in that they're all desperate. They have become, you know, it's that unlikely team. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Or or in part, it's the it's the unlikely team going against, you know, that shouldn't work, Mm -hmm. working. Absolutely, goonies in effect. Yeah, and I I'll I'll say for Agatha, I think that this was her second plan. I don't think her plan was that they wouldn't be able to open the Witch's Road. I think her plan was if we can't. I'm going to steal all their power and go up against Salem Seven because <laughs> I could do that. So that's my that's my secondary plan. But if it works, we'll go onto the Witch's Road and I'll get my power. So Agatha, being the power grabber that she is, I feel like she was kind of going right. We'll do we'll do this yeah, plan B. But that could explain why she didn't want to add the Green Witch that she needed to have. She could have been going right. If I don't add the Green Witch, then I'll just steal all the power of these three <laughs> right here. Maybe the Green Witch was too powerful and she felt like she couldn't overcome her so maybe you're right maybe her her full plan was to take the power of these three witches not include yeah. the green witch so that the the spell wouldn't work and take all their powers so maybe that was it um interesting idea and i guess i guess we'll un- we'll understand as the episodes go on we'll understand who this uh green witch that was supposed to be in the coven and hasn't arrived is because uh yeah mrs hart is totally lost in this group she has no idea what she's doing here she shouldn't be here she just has green thumbs not a not a a witchy bone in sight uh within her yeah absolutely yeah but they do get onto the witch's road they get down it does feel a little uh wizard of oz like i guess next episode will be following the purple brick road yeah Um, exactly uh, there is a sense here of uh the the yellow brick road that's purple um interestingly taking their shoes off as well because that kind Mm -hmm. of intensified it a bit for me just because the shoes of the wicked witch of the west Mm. are so central in the wizard of oz Mm -hmm. um and like are they taking them off just in case Um, case they happen to meet dorothy on the road yeah that they (laughs) took their shoes off i'm hoping they kind of explain that because i didn't understand that yeah but it made me immediately think well we can't die with our shoes on kind of thing like the wicked witch of the west in wizard of oz but and like locking up your bike it's like oh don't go down the road because you might meet dorothy and she might steal your shoes (laughs) yeah exactly but i like how they do all get into the staircase in before the salem seven can strike um or at least strike agatha Mm -hmm. and uh, i like the fact that it touches throughout this episode so 
the the Salem Seven uh, all have a, an an animal associated with them. Um, and yes, we learned this from the credits because yes, they're all exactly. given names in the credits. Uh, we don't we don't get it through the episode, but through but throughout the episode, we do see animals that are watching on exactly. for Agatha. She's seeing them every time, and the and, music yeah. changes to quite ominous music. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we see rat, coyote, and crow in yes. this episode, yeah. and that's where th- the the mood changes as Agatha um, sees them and kind of you know immediately is moving on mm-hmm. rapidly getting out of there yeah but there's also the snake the fox the owl and then vertigo mm. which i guess isn't an animal but that was the most interesting one well yes we did we have no idea who these no. uh, who these characters are uh, we have no idea what the connection is those are how they're named in the credits um vertigo is the first name that comes up so i'm presuming that's the leader of Maybe, uh, of yeah. the salem um seven I absolutely loved how they appeared on screen where we saw one in the street and Herb, the neighbor, is looking at going, are you seeing this as well? So this isn't something that's hidden from absolutely the, the members of Westview, the people in Westview. He sees it and is terrified by it. But I love that you see the one and then it becomes the seven. They just spread out from yeah. behind each other. Very cool. Very, uh, very Hydra-like uh, for me. <laughs> but very cool. Really enjoyed that. Uh, so we're off on the road. Absolutely. Down on the road, on the witch's road. Uh, Really looking forward to seeing uh, this coven down there and Mrs. Hart. Yeah. um, And the teen, in fact. Absolutely. uh, Down on this uh, witch's road, Mm -hmm. uh, just to see uh, what happens down there for sure. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it in our notes section really quickly uh, about the black heart uh, that's mentioned. Um, a little theory that we have before the episodes come out. So this theory might be repeated by hundreds of other people on YouTube or <laughs> people on Twitter or wherever else you're getting your theories from. But um, black heart is a character in Marvel Comics. There's a character called Black Heart. Yeah. It's a demon created by Mephisto. So I wonder. <laughs> Is the showrunner Jack Schaefer leaning into all the theorizing that happened in season one about whether Mephisto was going to appear in well, in exactly. WandaVision? It was a theory that was going around for weeks and drove all the people who were theorizing about it insane by the end of the season when there was no Mephisto. Everybody was thought to be Mephisto from uh, Senior Scratchy <laughs> yeah. to Wanda's brother Pietro appearing. He was supposed to be Mephisto. It could be anybody that's Mephisto. Maybe Agatha's Mephisto. Maybe Wanda's Mephisto herself. And this time they've mentioned a character called Blackheart who is a demon created by Mephisto. So I think they're just leaning into it. Yeah, I, I definitely, I think so too. But there is that Mephisto theory connection, whether it is or, or it isn't, mm-hmm. who knows. But either way, it, it's a really nice little touch, um, I think, from the writing and the showrunner, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Um, you know, or indeed, you know, should it be Senior Scratchy the Rabbit? Is that the Green Witch? Just because we have the teen holding mm-hmm. um Mr. Senor Scratchy. Um, <laughs> yes. You just wonder, is that, is that why Agatha is absolutely trying to avoid bringing the Green Witch? Yeah. Is it, is, is it that she's already had a battle against the Green Witch and maybe, again, she has changed him into the rabbit that she's been carrying around? Yeah. We saw him in episode one. We saw him in episode two. I know it's a cute rabbit. Don't get me wrong. You would put the rabbit on screen as often as you possibly can, but just odd that he's been around all the time throughout season one didn't turn out out to be anything big so as a showrunner and head writer like jack schaefer do you go oh i'm going to write him into being something big for second season you know and do we do we pay off the what the fans wanted in the first season and go senior scratchy is actually the green witch or is actually mephisto turned into a rabbit hey look the theories start here Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think um, one other quick note, just the, the Wizard of Oz reference is that Agatha does call the teen, because she doesn't know his name, Toto. Yes, she uh, does. At one point, yep. um, her dog. So, uh, yeah, uh, again, another little reference there to Wizard of Oz. Uh, and we do have Agatha seeing uh, the sort of foundations and remains of Wanda's house. Which yeah. She, uh, has a little spit on, and of course, there's a ton of graffiti as well. Yeah, I noticed the graffiti because I, th- I thought that was um, really interesting. That there was lots of people that were obviously very angry in Westview uh, about what had happened to them. You know, we we hear mention that nobody in town wants to even say the name Wanda anymore. Um, Agatha says they're all scared of that, but 
given the trauma that they've all gone through and are still living in this town as well, um, they don't want to even mention her name. So the foundations of the house that she had built there in her mind or with her powers, um, they're now all graffitied by the people in Westview. That was yeah. really interesting to have that touch in there. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, really good uh, little touch. Any more notes, Derek? Nothing else from me. So, John, do you defend Agatha all along? Episode two, Circle Zone with Face, Unlock Thy Hidden Gate. I really do defend this. I've really enjoyed. I really enjoyed this episode, and I'm enjoying Agatha all along at the moment. I give this uh, four and a half lapsed expiration dates out of five. It's the snack food. Um, Derek was looking at me quizzically. It was the snack food <laughs> that uh, the teen could conjure up, yes. um, of which only uh, Lilia uh, was brave enough to yeah. um, sort of gobble down. Like, I don't mind expired food. It's absolutely fine. Exactly. <laughs> and I kind of did like the way that the teen was trying to make this almost like a sort of, I don't know, was, I guess, uh, well, a witch's coven circle, you know, like knitting circle, yeah. crochet. He was trying to make it a party, like, though. He had his yeah. welcome sign up on the wall to exactly. welcome in the coven. This is his dream. He's been he's been researching this for years, and here's his opportunity to join a real coven. Exactly. It's good for him. Yeah. But I I loved this episode. I loved that it was the bringing the team together that I really hope we're going to be with uh, for the rest of this show because I loved each and every one of these witches. Um, and dare I say it, the possible suspicious witch in Mrs. Hart, is she, isn't she? <laughs> Don't you um, have any idea what's going on? Oh, is, yeah, is she just going to yeah. be absolutely fantastic as she was in this? Love the comedy thread through this entire episode. Absolutely. Really good. Is she Agatha all along Scarecrow, um, the, the character without a brain, the one that doesn't know what's going on? Yeah, you well, know? that Maybe is true. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Good stuff. Uh, I absolutely defend this episode. I thought there was just so much fun. Get your gang together and putting these two episodes episodes together back to back your little call back to to one division for, for in episode one um kick off the idea of getting to the witch's road and then here in episode two getting the gang together and starting the witch's road perfect way to kick off this adventure for agatha harkness and um, so we'll see how it goes in episode three but i thought the two episodes coming out together worked really well and now this excellent cast that's surrounding uh, Agatha Harkness. Uh, seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. A great song as well, so let's hope the music keeps going as well as this for the rest of the season. Well, that's it, absolutely. And I mean, again, just the other kind of link to Wizards of Oz here is that, you know, Agatha calls out the three as a coward, a fraud, a disappointment, mm, which is very, very similar like, yeah. to the lion, the tin man, and the scarecrow. I thought you were going to go lion, which in the wardrobe, uh, but you were right. <laughs> plus the teen as Toto. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, interesting. Yeah. Off we go to the land of the friends of Dorothy John. Yeah, indeed we do. <laughs> um, excellent stuff. But our next thing is the Agatha All Along Cauldron Quiz. Absolutely. Let's go to our Coven Cauldron Quiz. John, have you got our second question in the Coven Cauldron Quiz for I this week? I do. Fellow quizzers, fellow defenders, question two. How would a payment to the psychic Lilia appear on your bank account? Mm-hmm. Yes, have a check. Uh, she does tell you uh, what it is. Um, John, do you want to give the question one more time? Yes. How would a payment to the psychic Lilia appear on your bank account? Excellent. That's the second question of nine. Get your answers in at the end of the season to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. And if you have all the questions right, you could be in with a chance of getting your hands on some Agatha Harkness goodies at the end of the season. That is also the place you send any feedback into us. We love to hear your thoughts on Agatha all along. Uh, so far, email us there. You can email us a voicemail up to two minutes and we will play it on the podcast if you want to do it that way. Uh, or you can pop on over to our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV podcast industries. There's a spoiler post up there for every episode of Agatha All Along. Yes, absolutely. And of course, fellow defenders, please subscribe to the podcast over at tvpodcastindustries.com. Mm -hmm. And remember to share as well, because of course, sharing the podcast is sharing, sharing the, the love. love. Yes, the it witchy is. The witchy love. Yes, indeed. it is. Absolutely. We'll be back next week with Agatha All Along, episode three, which airs on 25th September on Disney+. Plus. See you later, witches. Yes, thank you so much for joining us, fellow defenders, as always, until episode three. Keep watching, keep listening, and of course, keep defending. Bye. Bye. Bye.